Now we are going to talk about the smallest type of cell, the prokaryotic cell. But before we move on to prokaryotic cell, we need to address a very important feature of the cell. Cells are small. Irrespective of what animal they come from, even the larger animals like whales and elephants, their cells are also very small. So why is that, that cells are very small? Cells are small because they have to maintain a specific surface area to volume ratio. As the volume increases, so does the demand for raw materials and also requirement that the waste products that are produced by cell during metabolism, they have to be released outside the cell. For example, cells need glucose as a source of energy. They burn glucose in an oxidation reaction, just like our fuel. We, uh, the fuel burns in our houses or in our cars. It produces carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has to be exported out, whereas glucose and oxygen have to be brought in. So as the size of the cell increases, its requirement for raw material also increase and also demi demand to export the, raw, the waste material outside the cell. So let's look at the general formula. Surface area of a cube is we get the surface area of a cube by adding the area of six sides of the cube. So if a cube is one millimeter, in each dimension, the surface area of this cube will be 6 millimeter. Whereas if we calculate the volume of this cube, it will be 1 cube, which is also 1. So the surface area to volume ratio is 6 to 1. Now let's look at a slightly bigger cube. The cube is 2 millimeters each side. Now if we calculate the surface area, the surface area becomes 24 millimeter. We use the same formula we used previously to calculate the volume. Now, the volume will be 2 cube, which is 8. So, surface area to volume ratio is 24 to 8 and or when if we simplify it, it is 3 to 1. So, now we have seen that as the size increases, the surface area to volume ratio decreases and that is an impediment for cells to be of a bigger size. Now let's move on. Let's look at the smallest cell, the prokaryotic cell. The important feature of prokaryotic cell is that prokaryotic cells do not have membrane enclosed organelles. We will look at, we will contrast it, what are the membrane enclosed organelles when we talk about the eukaryotic cell. We have seen some of them in the animation, but Prokaryotic cells, the bacterial cells, for example, do not have membrane enclosed organelles. These cells don't even have a nucleus. Their DNA is present in, in a specific region, generally, which is called the nucleoid region. They have the genetic material or the DNA is surrounded by the cytoplasm, which contains particular matter, for example, ribosomes, which are suspended in the cytoplasm of these cells. These cells have a plasma membrane, which is a selective barrier, which is allowing these cells to import certain things and export the waste material. However, the requirement is that cells stay a specific size. These cells also have a cell wall. The cell wall is important for the for maintaining the shape of the cell. Plasma membrane, as we saw, is fluid. It does not have a shape. It adapts the shape of whatever compartment is containing it. So, bacterial cells are very small. They are the smallest type of cells. They don't have any membrane-enclosed organelles. Some of these cells have special features. For example, cyanobacteria can perform photosynthesis. It's a process by which organisms capture light they use the energy of light to, to make complex molecules, for example, glucose, which can be used as a raw material for other molecules. Some bacteria have actin-like filaments, but it is not actual actin. Uh, the, 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 the some bacteria have flagella, but their flagella is not made up of actin filaments as opposed to the eukaryotic cells. Their 
their flagella is made up of a different type of protein called flagellin.